Today, I want to talk to you a little bit about an important topic that most people don't really understand, but it's pretty simple. And that's transparent encryption versus application layer encryption. We'll start with transparent encryption, okay? This is what the vast majority of people are doing. This is what, if you if you have a vendor who says that they're encrypting your data, probably this is what they mean, and they're being a little disingenuous by not saying so explicitly. So what is transparent disk encryption? Well, I mean, first, you should understand that this is basically the same thing that you have on your phone or on your laptop, and um, it protects the data on those devices when they're powered down. So if they're off and someone goes to turn them on or if, or and they don't know your password, then they go to look at the disk and like pull the disk out of your computer or whatever, it'll be a whole bunch of garbage to them. And here's how that works. Okay, you start with your data, and when you go to store it, when you go to store it, say in a database or on a disk, it it goes to that place. And then at the lower levels, usually of the operating system, sometimes if your database software, that's when the encryption happens. Okay. And then it actually gets to the to the disk itself. So on the disk itself, it's encrypted, but at the operating system, at the user level of if anyone who's on the system looking at things on a running system, effectively it's not encrypted at all. Okay. So yeah, straight up, transparent disk encryption is intended for one thing and one thing only, and that's to pr protect you from someone stealing your device, stealing a hard drive out of a server, and so forth. Now, in the case of servers, that's not very typical nor very likely. It's entirely possible that um, uh, a drive goes bad and that someone can't, you know, it's so bad that you can't get on it and say delete, and so they, they have to throw it out. Um, having an encrypted drive is extremely important for that scenario. That happens a lot in actual data centers and servers. Um, and by having that transparent disk encryption, you prevent this scenario where you have to go find a place to take the drive to be shredded. <laughs> so transparent disk encryption, super important. But because anyone on the running system sees the data as if it weren't encrypted at all, it doesn't do anything to stop access to the data. Super important to understand that. By the way, we're talking about stored data here. You could also argue that HTTPS is transparent encryption. Like the difference between the HTTP and the HTTPS is really just whether or not the data between point A and point B is encrypted on the way. And that is important. And it's important that it's on. And it is a form of transparent encryption that's not disk encryption. Um, but it's worth also knowing that that also has no access control. So our public blog, for example, requires HTTPS. It's great. It requires all this encryption, but anyone can see it, right? Okay. With that in mind, let's talk about what the opposite of. Now, sometimes called application layer encryption, sometimes called application level encryption. Sometimes people don't even label it this way. But when we talk about application layer encryption, we're doing it specifically to set it up against transparent encryption. Okay. Instead of that low level, like disk level encryption, it's a higher level up where the applications are running. Okay. Not at the, not below in the bowels of the operating system. So the way this looks is it, it actually does protect the data on a running server, right? Okay. Someone gets into a server or on a running machine. You, someone gets access to your machine for a minute, whatever. It still protects the data. Okay. So you start with the data. Um, you send it. It gets encrypted probably by the application that's going to do the storing, and then it gets sent to the database or the file store or the S3 object store or whatever the thing is where the data is actually getting stored. So it gets encrypted, then it gets sent to the data store, and then the data store sends it into the, to the disk. But all the way down here at the lower layers, that's where it's a, it's a done deal. So someone gets access to that running system that has the data stored on it, and they go and they select through the data, or they start you know, opening up files. And the files that have been encrypted in this way at the application layer, those files are garbage to them, unless they can also get the key and all that kind of stuff. So key management and how you actually make the system properly secure is a whole other topic. But the thing to understand is that really at the end of the day, the access control comes from controlling the access to the keys or determining who has them, holds them, can see them and use them, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but 
with transparent disk encryption, it sort of doesn't even matter who has access to the keys because if a hacker gets in, they're going to get the data if that server is live. And that's it. Now you understand transparent disk encryption versus uh, uh, application layer encryption.